What's up, everybody? Welcome back to John's Fantasy Football Show. I'm Jared. That's John. We hope that you won your fantasy last week, and we're going to try to do the same thing this week. Now, we finally have come to the episode you've all been waiting for. It's the Q&A video. So we've been talking about it for a long time, trying to get you guys incorporated into John's Fantasy Football Show, and now we've finally done it. So John posted a TikTok on TikTok (laughs) saying that if you had any fantasy questions to put them in the comments. Now we went through, well, John went through and liked all of the ones that we want to put in the podcast. So without further ado, we're going to get started right now. John, how are you feeling so far? Doing great. I'm ready for this week. Hopefully we can help some people win their matchups, but also give some advice on trades and for rest of season predictions for some players. So let's do it. Beautiful, beautiful. And if I'm coughing a lot, I'm a little under the weather. So just bear with me here. Um, all right. We're going to kind of go rapid fire because these are super quick. Um, but somebody asked Kyler Murray or Tua, guys, I need help ASAP. Okay. So who said that? That was <laughs> first, first name is always tough. No, no log, no log, no log, N O L L O G E. You know who you are. Okay. So hopefully you guys, okay. So good thing you have Tua because it's, it actually worked out for you this week because Kyler, if you guys didn't know, he did injure himself on the last play of the game when he threw it to AJ Green in the end zone and threw that interception. He injured his ankle. So he didn't practice Wednesday. Thursday or Friday this week. So he is questionable. He's probably going to be a game time decision against San Francisco. But what I will say is that last time the Cardinals played San Francisco, they beat them, but it was only 17 to 10. And Kyler Murray had, I think, around 15 fantasy points in that game, maybe a little bit less. And against the Packers, he had 11 fantasy points. Now, I think you should probably try to sit Kyler this week. And if you have Tua, I would definitely start him over Kyler because he's playing the Texans and Kyler's playing San Francisco. And with that ankle injury, I don't think he has a 20, 25 point fantasy game in him, especially because A.J. Green is out. He was on the COVID list and DeAndre Hopkins hasn't practiced this week. He's going to be a game time decision for Sunday. So a lot of uncertainty and injuries in Arizona. So I would try not to start Kyler. And I do like Tua over Kyler this week. (laughs) <laughs> Moving on. Victor Sanchez 035 asks about two teammates. I'm going to keep talking as I grab something. Keenan Allen or Mike Williams? So obviously a lot of people asking about Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. Mike Williams had the better first half of the season, <clears throat> but we got to see the Chargers had a bye two weeks ago. And last week, what did they do against the Patriots? They came out, they threw a deep pass to Keenan Allen. I think it was like a 40 yarder and Keenan Allen had the much better fantasy day than Mike Williams and the chargers over their bye, they reassessed their team. And one of the things they said during their bye was we need to stop getting in third and longs. So what does that mean? They're basically, they've been taking too many shots on first and second and 10 down the field. And they want to get in better situations, better short yarded situations on third down, you know, third and three, third and four, instead of third and seven, third and eight. So what they it was evident that they tried to fix that last week against the Patriots. They gave Keenan Allen a bunch of targets. And what does Keenan Allen specialize in getting separation right off the line of scrimmage? So getting him a quick pass, getting five, six yards so that on second down, you only have like a second and four, second and three. And you have that chance to take that shot or do a run play if you want. So I think. As the season moves on, Keenan Allen is going to be more involved. Obviously, Keenan Allen was the preferred wide receiver on this offense before the season started. And I think the second half of the year, that's going to be the case. I would rather have Keenan Allen than Mike Williams. And in this game, I would definitely rather have Keenan Allen than Mike Williams because Darius Slay plays on the outside for the Eagles. And he's going to be covering Mike Williams for most of the game. So we saw Darius Slate play well against DJ Moore a few weeks ago. He's been playing pretty well. The Eagles have been pretty stingy on wide receiver fantasy points, but Keenan Allen over the middle in the slot should have a decent fantasy game and definitely better than Mike Williams, I think. All right. ER Burrow, 150. Feelings on Dan Arnold this week. 
I actually do like An- Dan Arnold this week. Some interesting stat. One interesting one, I put, posted him on one of my TikToks, guys, you should pick up for this week. And he actually led the Jaguars in catches last week. He had eight catches. And now I know that the Jaguars, um, they play the Bills this week. So Bills are a really good defense. But Marvin Jones is going to be covered by Tredavious White. James Robinson didn't practice this week. Most likely not going to play. Carlos Hyde is going to start at running back. You know what's coming. The Jaguars are going to have to throw the ball, and it's going to be tough to get it to Marvin Jones. So who are they going to go to? They're probably going to go to the guy that led them in catches last week, which is Dan Arnold. So I do like Arnold if you need to throw in a tight end instead of Gronk or you know some guys that are on by Ricky Seals Jones or an injured Logan Thomas. I think Dan Arnold is a great option there. Um, I think he could have a good game. You know, the Jaguars are going to be behind. So I think he I think he's probably going to get somewhere between 12 to 17 fantasy points. So that's as much as you can ask for from tight end. Johnny Gaberti asks, should I start Kadarius Tony, Cole Beasley or Brian Edwards? Okay, so that's a good question, because. As we all saw the news of Henry Ruggs, um, hopefully he gets better and hopefully he, you know, heals up and everything is fine with both those families. But a lot of people asking about Brian Edwards and Hunter Renfro. Yeah, their target share could increase. Darren Waller probably going to play, but uh, which should take some targets away from Renfro and Brian Edwards. But I wouldn't expect Edwards to make a huge splash right away with Ruggs out. I think he's going to be probably slowed more into the offense. The, you know, the... Raiders are coming off a bye. They play the Giants. Giants don't have a good run defense, so Josh Jacobs and Kenyon Drake should have a good game. And then Cole Beasley did have a great game last week. He actually led the Buffalo wide receivers in fantasy points, while Emmanuel Sanders had zero fantasy points, which was disappointing for most uh, players, uh, fantasy players at least. But Cole Beasley actually didn't practice Wednesday, didn't practice Thursday. He's probably still going to play this weekend on Sunday against the Jaguars, and it's a great matchup because their secondary is horrible. They let Lockett and DK. Lockett had over 10 catches and over 100 yards. DK had over two touchdowns last week, so or he did have two touchdowns. So Beasley and the Bills receivers, it's a good matchup. But I would actually go with Kadarius Toney this week. Only because Beasley is limited. They might try to get Sanders more involved this week. They're going to be leading by a lot. They're not going to need to throw the ball a lot against the Jaguars. They could probably run it with Moss a little bit and Singletary. And I think the Giants against the Raiders, they're probably going to have to throw it. And Kadarius Toney, he was limited in practice with that thumb injury, but it seems like he's going to play. He most likely will. Sterling Shepard, we saw go down with an injury. He's doubtful. And Kenny Galladay just returned for his first practice since week five on Thursday. So it doesn't seem like he's going to play either. Saquon Barkley obviously ruled out with the ankle injury. So if Kadarius Tony is the only guy in this offense, even if Engram is there, the last time Tony was the only guy in this offense was against Dallas, and he was one of my weekly picks, and that was his blow-up game. So Kadarius Tony could be one of my weekly picks this week. I'm not sure yet, but I would definitely put him in over Beasley and Edwards. Beautiful. We're going to go into some trade talk. And Don Bernat says should i do this trade so he receives saquon barkley and justin jefferson but he gives away austin eckler and hunter renfro okay so that's a good question barkley obviously with the ankle injury he's not going to play this week he has a bye next week and a lot of you might can be coming up on your trade deadline so you might have to get this trade done you might not be able to wait until Barkley returns to give away Eckler and Renfro. But long story short, I think you should accept this trade. And I think that Eckler probably has a little more upside than Barkley the rest of the year, only because the Giants obviously have a really bad record. So they might, they might not shut, they're not going to shut Barkley down per se, but they might limit his touches a little bit, give Devontae Booker, you know, some third down snaps, which would limit uh, Barkley's ceiling in a PPR league. So Eckler, I think, probably has the better outlook for the rest of the year over Barkley, but not by much. But then Justin Jefferson definitely has the better upside over Hunter Renfro. And a lot of people might be the guy that tra- is trading you probably is high on Renfro because Ruggs is out now. And I would take advantage of that because I don't think Renfro has any more upside than he had before because Ruggs, he never did anything underneath. He was always the deep shot guy or like a 20 yard in or 20 yard curl like Renfro plays in the slot. He doesn't do any of that stuff. So it's going to benefit Brian Edwards more than it, uh, 
benefits Renfro that Ruggs is out. So I think you should do this trade. I know Jefferson has been struggling, but he's definitely an upgrade from Renfro. And Barkley is a slight downgrade from Eckler only because he's out this week and next week because of the bye. But hopefully he comes back healthy and I would accept this trade if you can. This next one, there's three questions. So I'm just going to pick one. Okay. It's from Tequito. How does DJ Moore's rest of the season look like? So that's a great question because McCaffrey is expected to come back this week against the Patriots. We don't know how limited he's going to be. If you have him in fantasy, you're definitely going to start him because if he gets all the touches, he's going to get over 20 fantasy points. He probably won't, but his floor is probably around 10 points. So you're not going to pick anybody up instead of McCaffrey. But like we saw in the beginning of the season, McCaffrey was actually good for this offense. This offense has been very bad since McCaffrey left. And a lot of people might say, okay, well, if McCaffrey comes back, that's going to be really bad for DJ Moore because they're not going to throw it to DJ Moore. They're going to use McCaffrey so much that Moore's not going to be involved in the offense. That's actually completely wrong because you always want the guy you always want everybody to be healthy because you want them to move the ball down the field. The more that McCaffrey is involved, the more they move to the, fo- the ball down the field and the more chance that DJ Moore can get a touchdown and defenses are going to want to watch McCaffrey. They're going to be closer to the line of scrimmage. DJ Moore can now do some 15 yard in some 20 yard curls and get more involved in this offense. The first half of the season for more is, has been so much better than these in the last few weeks. So I think if you have DJ Moore, keep them. If you don't, you could try to trade for him because he has some good matchups, assuming that McCaffrey gets back healthy. I feel like these people like know who who's on my team. I have <laughs> I have Barkley and Justin Jefferson, and I got freaking uh, DJ Moore. Wow, it's weird. Okay. Really weird. You're like slightly <laughs> giving me advice okay. at the same time. <laughs> uh, cool kid, forty seven. Should I trade D Hop or Terry McLaurin for someone? It's pretty general. Okay. So I think, yeah, it's pretty general, but I think it's a great question because a lot of people <laughs> have been asking about DeAndre Hopkins. He had that hamstring injury, had that big catch against the Packers, didn't return until he had another 10 or 12 yard catch later in the game. Now, he did have a lot of time to rest, but he also isn't practicing this week. He's a game time decision for this weekend. So he's been very frustrating, especially because you probably draft him as your wide receiver one or two. And if you did, you're probably a little you know, nervous because he hasn't had that 30 point game. He's only had a few games over 20 fantasy points. He's kind of been touchdown dependent because there's so many other players in this offense. They've got James Conner getting touchdowns. They got Chase Edmonds getting catches out of the backfield. You got Kirk, you got Green, you got Moore, then you got Ertz and now you have Hopkins. So it's like there's so many guys to go to. You're probably like nervous and a little frustrated with DeAndre Hopkins. But what I would say is obviously anybody's tradable with the right price, but I would try to keep Hopkins. And this is the reason I have Hopkins in one of my 12 man leagues. My receivers are Tyreek Hill, Deandre Hopkins and Jamar chase. So I'm set for receivers for the rest of the year. But what I would say is that Hopkins, even if he doesn't get through this injury this week, let's say he, you know, takes another week to return. What I do like about him, he has a buy in week 12, which gives him time to rest and get healthy for the playoff stretch in fantasy football, at least. And what I do want to say is that he has great, matchups come playoff time in week 15 he plays the detroit lions in week 16 he plays the indianapolis colts who give up the ninth most fantasy points to receivers gave up two touchdowns to elijah moore on thursday night football and we saw the colts secondary has been pretty bad and then they play dallas in week 17 you might say he's going to be matched up with trevon diggs but deandre hopkins is matchup proof and dallas has given up the eighth most fantasy points to wide receiver this wide receivers this season so hopkins has a great fantasy playoff matchups so i would try to keep him if you were to trade him try to get you know try to see if you, if you need a running back try to get you know an rb2 and maybe a flex receiver or a wide receiver too but you're probably not going to get much for hopkins right now because his stock is as low as it can get the whole year right now because he's injured and he might not play this game he only had two catches last game so you probably won't be able to get much for him so i would say keep him but as far as terry mclaurin that's a really good question and i would say i'm going to give you a couple trade targets for terry mclaurin one is dj moore i just talked about him with mccaffrey coming back it's the perfect time to trade for dj moore because a lot of people might be like 
oh, you know, DJ Moore, he's not going to be as good when McCaffrey comes back. I just explained why that's false. He's going to be better as the season goes on. And McLaurin could be a person to trade away because he's been really frustrating. He only had 23 yards receiving in his last game. In three of his last four games, he's at under 10 fantasy points, under nine fantasy points even. So he's a guy you could trade for DJ Moore. Another guy I would trade, McLaurin, up until this point, point has more fantasy points than Stefan Diggs. So maybe you try to get Stefan Diggs. Maybe you try to get Jeff- Justin Jefferson, who's been frustrating, but has a good outlook. And maybe you go for Brandon Cooks. Now, you might be able to get somebody else. In, including Brandon Cooks if you trade away McLaurin. But Cooks is a good option. Tyrod Taylor coming back this week against Miami. I know Miami has um, Byron Jones and Xavier Howard on the other side, but they've been struggling against receivers. And with Tyrod Taylor coming back, Cooks' outlook is really good. Remember the first three games of the year with Tyrod Taylor, 18.2 fantasy points, 22.8 fantasy points, and 20.7 fantasy points. So now for the rest of the year, you play Miami this week, you get a bye, then you play Tennessee. You still got to play Jacksonville and Indianapolis again in the division. So great matchups for Cooks. I would even go for him. And another guy, maybe you go for Deontay Johnson. Maybe you go for Keenan Allen. But I would try to make some trades for these guys because McLaurin has been frustrating. I'm going to group these two comments together. So Shane Stein and Leighton Scribner 29. So what is your opinion on the Tennessee situation? Is one player going to have value or are they just going to have a committee? And then Leighton just said players to replace Derrick Henry. Okay. So I will, I'll address the first one first. And obviously that's a big question in fantasy football this week. Do I pick up Adrian Peterson? Do I pick up Jeremy, Jeremy McNichols? Which one's going to have the better fantasy game the rest of the year? So I'd say, for the rest of the season, I'm more optimistic on Adrian Peterson. And for a couple of reasons, I don't think Peterson is all that bad. I think he still has some juice and power left in him. But a reason why I don't like him, obviously, he does. He has almost no PPR value. He's not going to really get any catches in the pass game unless it's a blown coverage or something or Tannehill has to check it down to Peterson. So I think that's a problem. But they did say the Tennessee Titans coaching staff said they said, we don't want to change the offense now that Derrick Henry is gone. And that's a good sign for Peterson because that means that they still want to do downhill running on first and second down because of Henry. Henry is out. They don't want to change their offense. They don't want to do a complete makeover. So it's good for Peterson because he's a big back and they're saying that they're still going to run the football downhill. Now, Jeremy McNichols still could be in that role. He's not a small back. He's more of a receiving back. And I think All but five of his touches this year have been catches, but it's a good sign for Peterson that they want to get him involved and they worked him out on Monday. They signed him to the active roster on Friday and they are, they said that they are impressed with him. He's a good locker room guy. He has a great personality, great relationships with players and offensive linemen are going to want to block for him. So I think that Peterson, I think he's going to be, his ceiling is probably like a Damian Harris getting touchdowns, but Harris doesn't really catch anything in the passing game. But as long as the Titans can move the ball down the field, Peterson will get almost every carry from inside the five yard line. Now, McNichols, on the other hand, he's going to get a lot of passing game work. So as far as this week against the Rams, you're starting McNichols because he's more familiar with the offense. Peterson still hasn't played an NFL game yet. They might want to ease him in a bit. And the Rams high favored in this game against the Titans. The Titans are going to have to throw some McNichols is probably going to play more snaps than Peterson in this one. But moving forward, I like Peterson a little bit more. Now, in terms of replacing Henry, obviously nobody can replace Henry, but what you could do is you could pick up Adrian Peterson. He wouldn't replace Henry, but you might need to trade away one of your good players. Now I talked about this with some of my other, my other um, people that were messaging me through Patreon. And I was saying, if you have like a Patrick Mahomes or a Lamar Jackson or an Aaron Rodgers, you could trade away your quarterback Pick up Taysom Hill is going to probably start the rest of the year. Trevor Simeon, Trevor Simeon was named the starter this week, but Taysom Hill is going to be a good starter. You could try to stream QBs for the rest of the year. Trade your quarterback to somebody who has Aaron Rodgers or Brady who's on by this week, and you could try to get one of their running backs. Maybe Antonio Gibson. I know I've been talking about him. I haven't been high on him, but he does get a bye week this week to rest that shin. 
And Washington could be more of a running team moving forward now that their schedule is what it is. They might want to start pounding the rock and Gibson might be a little bit more healthy after the bye. So trading for some of these running backs, Montgomery coming off the injury um, next week, probably. So trading your cornerback, try to get a running back in return that you can't pick up because none of those guys or all the guys you could trade for are probably going to have more value than Adrian Peterson. So I think what you could do, trade away your quarterback and maybe stream QBs for the rest of the year. If you have the Rams defense, now that they got Von Miller, I know a lot of people want them on their fantasy team. Trade them away if you if you need, because they're not going to be that special. You could stream defenses easily. You know, trade away the Rams defense and try to get, you know, an RB2 or something. Trade him and one of your bench receivers for a running back. Beautiful. Uh, guys, talk. Bro. Should I trade for Miles Sanders for playoff stretch? He must have a okay. good, he must have a good playoff schedule. So his playoff schedule is pretty good. He has a week 14 bye. So right before the fantasy playoffs, he gets a bye. Week 15, he gets Washington. Obviously, their defense has been bad. Then he gets the Giants in week fifth in week 16, and their run defense has been bad. And then in week 17, he gets the Washington football team again which is a little weird that they played them two in the two, two times in three weeks. But the long story short, I wouldn't trade for Miles Sanders because you guys know this Philadelphia Eagles backfield is such a mess. Nick Sirianni, he had um, his previous you know, coaching experience used a running back by committee approach. So we could have seen this coming if we looked into his past, but he likes to use a lot of different guys. Like we saw this past week, everybody thought Kenneth Gainwell was going to be such a good play this week against the Lions. He had, they scored 44 points and he didn't even, even have a touchdown or even 10 fantasy points. He just wet, like shat the bed. I mean, Boston Scott had two touchdowns. Jordan Howard had two touchdowns. I think what that tells you is even when Miles Sanders come back, there's no predicting this this backfield, and it's just all over the place. So I would try to stay away from it as much as I can because you could start Boston Scott this week, and it could be the Kenneth Gainwell show. It could be the Jordan Howard show. And Miles Sanders coming back, then they have four running backs that they like. I think it's a complete mess. I would try to go for other running backs for the playoff stretch, not Miles Sanders. This next one's from Brady Kennedy, 56. Um... Should I trade Nick Chubb for Tyreek Hill? If that seems, I'll answer that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that that's, seems like a no brainer to me. I mean, Chubb has been dealing with the injury, but the Browns like to use two running backs. So Chubb has a capped ceiling because of Dearness Johnson and Kareem Hunt. So if you can get one of the best receivers in the league for Chubb, you're getting him. Frank. Why do you guys have such tough names? Man? <laughs> I'm just going to say Frank. F- Fian- Fianaka. Uh, Devontae Parker, Boston Scott, or Adrian Peterson. So you got one receiver, two running backs. Okay, so in a PPR league, like you said, receivers are preferable. But I would have said Devontae Parker, but he actually had a setback in practice. He did have eight catches last week which was good. He had over 15 fantasy points and I would have said, start him against Houston, but now I'm concerned. He has a setback. He's doubtful to play now. So you probably want to monitor that through the weekend. So then you're deciding between Boston Scott or Adrian Peterson. And if I was deciding between them at that point, I would go with Boston Scott only because Peterson is his first game. And there he has a tough matchup against the Rams. He's probably going to be eased into it a bit. Jeremy McNichols is going to get most of the snaps. And after this week, everybody's going to be like, oh, wow, McNichols is, you know, the guy. But I would take a step back and, and say Peterson's going to be lean, you know, uh, eased into the offense. So Boston Scott, remember the Chargers, they play the Chargers this week. They don't really have a great defensive line. I mean, it's good with Bosa, but in terms of run defense, they've given up the sixth most fantasy points to running backs. And Boston Scott led the Eagles running backs in snaps last week. So I like Scott out of those three. Ant Bondi, <clears throat> pick three. Jalen Waddle. Adam Thielen, CeeDee Lamb, or DJ Moore? So that's pretty tough because 
actually the first one, Jalen Waddle, you're going to start him, especially because Devontae Parker is now doubtful. So it's going to be Jalen Waddle and Mike Gesicki catching passes for Miami against a bad Houston defense. So I think you're definitely starting Waddle. The second one, Adam Thielen, you're probably starting him. He plays the Ravens in a little bit of a tougher matchup, but I think that that's going to be a close game, but I still think you're going to start Adam Thielen. Kirk Cousins loves to give him the ball. He's his comfort uh, target. And then the third one was Jamar Chase. No, the third one was DJ Moore. Oh, C- sorry, C- C- CD Lamb. C- D- Lamb. Okay, so CD Lamb is actually he was limited in practice. Didn't practice Wednesday or Thursday, and he he's probably going to be questionable. I think he's going to play against the Broncos this week. Dak is probably going to return against the Broncos, but monitor that situation. If CD Lamb plays, I think you should start him. And I think you should sit DJ Moore. And the reason I say sit DJ Moore is because McCaffrey is still not fully healthy. It will help their offense that McCaffrey comes back. But I've always talked about these Patriots cornerbacks. JC Jackson has been able to shut down guys pretty well. So I think JC Jackson on DJ Moore is going to be good now. But look at the reports before Sunday's game. Look up Sunday morning. Waddle is going to play. So definitely start him. Thielen's going to play, start him. But if CD lamb plays and he's, and they're like, okay, yep, he's full go. He's, he's all set, then start him. But if they say, if they come out and say, oh, CD lamb is a game time decision. And even if he plays, he might be a little bit limited. Then you start DJ more because you can't take that chance with lamb getting re-injured or them giving him limited snaps. But my guess is that lamb is going to be a full practice. And I think he's going to be a full go on Sunday against the Broncos. So I would start Waddle, Thielen and lamb and sit DJ more. Alex Vila, zero seven. What should I do with Antonio Gibson? Well, I talked about Gibson before, and obviously he's been frustrating. I haven't been high on him um, in, in the last few weeks. His last three games, 4.4 fantasy points, 7.6 and 8.4. So needless to say, he's been very frustrating. They do get a buy this week. So hopefully he can, you know, get that shin back to normal. So what I would say is you probably can't get much value. I always say when people ask me, should I trade this guy? I always say no, but yes. Like you have to shop around for everybody. You can't be willing, not willing to trade anybody. If you're, if you say, okay, I'm going to tell you right now, what I would say is don't trade Gibson because he could be fully healthy with his shin after their buy. He gets two weeks rest. But what I will say is that you still want to shop around. You want to test out the market and see what pe- how people value Gibson. My guess is that he's not going to be valued very high because in his last three games, he's had under nine fantasy points in each of them. So I don't think he's going to be valued very high, and I don't think you're going to be able to get much for him. So that's so. So I would say shop around, but don't take anything less. You know, don't take too less, not enough for him. You know get good value if you're going to trade him. But I would say keep him because his value is low and his upside is pretty high if he comes back from that injury this week. All right, last one, kind of transitioning into our predictions. Zachary Lesser, who is a must-start and must-sit? And also, who should we be trading for? Okay, so good questions. I'll start out with who we should be trading for. I mentioned some receivers. I like Brandon Cooks. Obviously, I saw a lot of people saying it on TikTok. Brandon Cooks with Tyrod Taylor coming back. DJ Moore with McCaffrey coming back. I like Debo Samuel. It's probably going to be hard to get Debo Debo Samuel. A lot of you guys have Michael Pittman. I wouldn't be opposed to you guys trading away Michael Pittman because T.Y. Hilton's probably going to come back, and Pittman has been on a tear the last few weeks. I mean, maybe hold on to him one more week for him to play Jacksonville and have a great game and then maybe trade him away because he plays Buffalo and then Tampa Bay. So maybe hold on to Pittman for another week. But trading four guys like Cooks, DJ Moore, Deontay Johnson, who's going to be the top target there, Stefan Diggs with Dawson Knox still out, Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf with Russ coming back. I like those guys. Cordero Patterson, if you need a wide receiver two or an RB2 with Ridley out or Pitts with Ridley out. I mean, a lot of these guys, I'm going to go over to the running backs, but, you know, a a lot of these guys, you know, Antonio Gibson, you might want to take the chance on if there's reports on the bye week that Gibson is full practice and the shin injury is behind him, then I do like him moving forward. 
I mean, you, you also have to look at the playoff schedules and what I do want to do maybe next week on this podcast, you guys should come back next week because I want to do a playoff special. I did it last year and I want to do it again. I'm going to do a bunch of research and I want to give you some guys, you got some players you guys should trade for going into the fantasy playoffs. I mentioned Deandre Hopkins has a good playoff schedule and the Eagles running backs also do, but you can't really trust any of them to lead them in carries or touches. So Come back next week and I'll talk about some great matchups that are in the fantasy playoffs that you could trade for. But zooming out and looking at it at a whole in terms of running backs, you like Patterson because of Ridley is not there. Henderson obviously is good for net James Robinson. Some of these lower tier guys, Michael Carter, I probably wouldn't trade for because of the Jets situation. We saw he only had nine points on Thursday night, but he did have that 30 point game. So Antonio Gibson. So these these sort of guys, Miles Gaskin could have a good next few weeks with Malcolm Brown on IR. And then maybe, you know, Kareem Hunt, you know, these guys, these second tier guys, another guy, Josh Jacobs. I know Kenyon Drake has been, you know, more involved with this new coaching staff, but they do like Jacobs and he's a guy you could trade for for the next few weeks. So targeting those sort of guys in in your leagues um, would be great. Beautiful. All right, so do you want to move into week 10 predictions? Yes, so I'm going to talk about, well, actually, we're in week, yeah, we're in week nine, right? Yeah, week nine. So oh, week nine. I'm getting ahead of myself. Here. <laughs> I, don't, I, can't pre- I can't predict that far ahead, I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks, come on. Yeah, no, I could probably do it. But um, so week nine, like you, you, the question asked, what are must starts and must sits? So that's a perfect transition. I want to talk about my weekly picks and must sits. Like I do every week on this podcast, I end with telling you guys some guys that I think are going to play well and some guys that I think are going to do worse than their projection. So I really don't have any of my weekly picks or must sits solidified. But again, I'm going to go through my list. I have a list of about eight to 10 players um, on my weekly picks, and I think four or five players on my must sits that I'm considering for those three spots on my Sunday live. So week nine weekly picks, one of them, Miles Gaskin with Devontae Parker. He was on this list, but now he's doubtful to play. So I think that's going to obviously help Jalen Waddle and Mike Gesicki, but you're probably starting them anyway. So Miles Gaskin could be good against the Texans, 10th most fantasy points to running backs. They might give him a few more targets in the passing game. So I like him. I mentioned before Kadarius Tony. If Galladay doesn't play, which he probably won't, Shepard's not playing, Barkley's not playing. I mean, Tony's going to be the focal point of this offense. He's going to get 10 targets probably. So I like that volume against the Raiders. He could be one of my weekly picks. Brian Edwards or Hunter Renfro versus the Giants. Like I said, Ruggs being out, usually it's probably going to benefit Brian Edwards a little bit more than Hunter Renfro, only because Edwards plays on the outside. So Edwards might be one of my weekly picks, probably not, but I think he's going to be more featured in this offense moving forward. Emmanuel Sanders against the Jaguars, great matchup, had zero fantasy points last week. Cole Beasley is questionable, didn't practice Wednesday or Thursday, so Sanders could be a great option. Tyler Conklin, tight end for the Minnesota Vikings, actually was second on the Vikings in catches last week, plays the Ravens, who gives up the most fantasy points to tight ends this week. He could be a good streaming option. I talked about Dan Arnold against the Bills. I think he could have a great game, led the team in catches last week. Marvin Jones is going to be covered by Tredavious White. And also Jamal Agnew, also on the Jaguars. If you guys didn't know, Agnew was the one that returned that touchdown Remember when Prater kicked that really long field goal to try to set the record and he missed and Agnew caught it and returned it for a touchdown and they almost beat the Cardinals that week. Well, Agnew was actually featured in the past game. He had like 12 or 13 targets last week and he's a punt returner. So like with, you know, with the emergence of him and, you know, DJ Chark getting injured and Marvin Jones being covered by Tredavious White. I think it could open space for Dan Arnold and Jamal Agnew. So if you're looking for a deeper dart throw in, in deep leagues, that could be an option. And also I talked about Devontae Parker, but Preston Williams, who was a healthy scratch last week, is usually involved in this offense. But if Parker's not there, Preston Williams will be. So this is only for deep leagues, but Preston Williams could be an option. And also Christian Kirk or Rondell Moore talked about Kyler Murray, his injury, if he plays, and if DeAndre Hopkins doesn't play. Remember, A.J. Green is ruled out because of COVID. So that mo- that's going to leave Ertz, Christian Kirk, and Rondell Moore left 
to catch passes in this offense. So obviously you don't start any of these guys if Kyler doesn't play, but if Kyler plays and D hop doesn't, I like Christian Kirk. He's been the preferred option over Rondell Moore, but Rondell Moore in deeper leagues is a possibility, but in 12 team leagues, Kirk in the flex, if D hop doesn't play. And then moving on to must sits, I have five names here. One of them I mentioned already, DJ Moore is on the list because of his matchup with JC Jackson. And I think that's going to be a low scoring game with the Patriots Cordero Patterson against the saints. I don't hate Patterson because obviously his volume is going to be pretty good, but the saints run defense has been amazing. They did pretty well against Fournette last week and beat the Buccaneers. So I would be careful about Patterson. I did talk about Marvin Jones against Tredavious white and the bills. The bills defense has been amazing this year. So be careful about him. Mike Williams against the Eagles. I also talked about him matched up with Darius Slay on the outside. I think Keenan Allen has a better game this week. I'd be careful about Mike Williams and I would try to trade him. I'm not as high as some other fantasy experts on Mike Williams the rest of the year. And I also mentioned this guy. So all guys I mentioned, Kyler Murray, I would sit Murray, even if he plays this week, I would rather have Tua. I would rather have Derek Carr. I would rather have Tyrod Taylor, to be honest, in this game, because Kyler, remember last season when he hurt that ankle? I mean, Jared, I think you talked about it last year on the podcast that ever since he hurt his ankle last year in week 10 or week 11, he was not the same quarterback that he was. And hopefully that's not the case. They should really, hopefully they learned from that and hopefully they rest him this week. But even if he plays, I wouldn't start Kyler Murray in fantasy football. Yeah, I remember that. I, you got to keep an eye on him. I, I know that they didn't run him as much. Yeah. So it was good for Chase Edmonds. He had a right. breakout um, second half of the season. Right. Um, is that going to do it? Or do we have I think, more? I think so. I mean, are there any decisions? I mean, are there any decisions that you are making for any of your fantasy teams? I know you have another 12 team league. You have our six team league. Are you deciding between any players or are your lineups uh, pretty much set for this week? Yeah, actually, you know what? Robert Woods is a guy that's questionable that a lot of ple- a lot of people have been saying um, like as much as like to drop him, like, not drop him, but trade him, like trade him high because he had 19 points last game, but he's got the injury and Von Jefferson's getting a lot of uh, targets. Uh, Cooper Cup obviously is just dominating that receiving core. So what do yeah. you think about Robert Woods? My my other receivers, I got none. I literally have n- no one else. But I put, I have him in my flex, so okay. like I could put like a JD McKissick, but that's basically it. And then you know free agents and stuff. I I would have like Devonte Parker, Hunter Renfro, th- those type of guys. Okay. So what I would have said, if Devante Parker didn't have that setback in practice, I probably would have said, pick him up because I like his matchup, but I really wouldn't be worried about Woods because I talked about him last week on the podcast. He was one of my players. I said was trending up because you can't go to Cooper cup every play. Now that Deshaun Jackson is out, I know Van Jefferson is getting more involved, but I really do like Woods. He had a receiving touchdown and a rushing touchdown. And on Wednesday, he did not practice. He has that foot injury but he's fully expected to play McVeigh, you know, addressed it and said, yep. he's still going to be still expected to play Sunday night. And don't forget he's playing the Tennessee Titans. The Titans have been absolutely horrible against the pass. He, Michael Pittman was my, one of my weekly picks last week. He was my number one pick and he had over 30 fantasy points against the Titans. So expect a good game from cup, expect a good game from woods against one of the worst pass defenses in the league. You have to start woods this week, even with that injury. And I don't even think it's really going to affect them. And the last one I think would be Barkley. Like I'm holding on to Barkley. I'm hoping that he can be the same player. Like I'm hoping that he could be a, a sort of playoff push guy. Right. Like he can come back as soon as possible, but also, you know, work his way back to the amount of carries and the amount of production that he was doing right before he got injured. He had that great game against the saints and then he gets injured. So I hope that he can get back to where he was when he was facing the saints. But what do you think? You think it's kind of like a lost cause? No, I think, I mean, I'm obviously a Barkley fan, got his jersey on, but I mean, he does have a great schedule down the stretch. Tampa Bay is a tough matchup after the bye, but then he gets the Eagles, second most fantasy points to running backs, Miami, ninth most fantasy points to running backs, 
Chargers, fifth most fantasy points to running backs. Dallas hasn't been able to contain him anytime they play him. And then the Eagles, again, second most fantasy points to running back. So he has a great matchup down the stretch. Now, like I said before, if anybody asks me about players, I always say shop around. If there's somebody, there might be somebody in your league that's a huge Saquon fan or thinks he's going to come back and be fully healthy and back to his normal form. And if you need, let's say, a wide receiver, I'd be down for you to trade Saquon for, you know, a Debo Samuel or something if you can get that high of a player. But in your case, I know that you have Saquon in our six team league and I know you're hurting with running backs. So if you were to trade away Saquon, it would be tough for you to get a running back of equal value because of the injury and because of the uncertainty. So I would say keep Saquon and your best bet is he, he won't play this week. He has a bye next week your best hope is that he comes back down the stretch and they don't ease him in. They just give him all the carries that he can handle. So I don't know if that's the case, but I mean, in our league, I know that's the league you have him. I have Kamara, I have Dalvin Cook, I have Zeke, and I have Joe Mixon. I don't even know if I'm willing to trade any of those guys for Barkley straight up only because of that uncertainty. Like I know Kamara, I know Cook, I know Zeke, and I know Mixon are all fully healthy right now. So I wouldn't want to take that chance on Barkley. But again, I always say shop around and see if there's anybody else in the league that really is high on him. Yeah, I knew drafting him that this was going to be the issue. It's like yeah. you have the high ceiling, but he's come back from an injury. Then he gets re-injured. And it's like we're in the same place that I was before when I picked him to draft. It's like he's coming off an injury. You have no clue how he's going to do. De- Devonta Booker actually did very well against the Chiefs. I was surprised that he had yeah. like almost 15 fantasy points. Yeah. Yeah, he did well. So, yeah, my other running backs, Damian Harris and Chuba Hubbard. So, Chuba Hubbard's going to get kicked, and Damian Harris is now in the starting spot. So, running backs actually, are hurting. Yeah, <laughs> I, I do want to take a look at – I want to take a look at the running backs that are available in our league. Um, so, I know you have – you have Damian Harrison at your RB2 spot right now, right? Yeah. He's projected 12.18. Now, Carolina, they've given up the second least amount of fantasy points to running backs. I don't, you don't have to do this, but Miles Gaskin, he might be one of my weekly picks. I think he's going to have a pretty good game. He's projected 12.28, so only 0.09 more than Harris. But I think the Houston and Miami game is going to be higher scoring. And I think it's a good situation for Gaskin because Malcolm Brown was injured. He was put on IR last week. And without Malcolm Brown at running back, Miles Gaskin had 15 touches last week. So I think it's a pretty high floor for Gaskin. But again, your choice. I know you're trying to get some wins this week. You're playing uh, a boot. So hopefully you can get that win. I started Gaskin two weeks ago. <laughs> After in, he had his in, big game. In London. Yeah, he had 3.4 points. So I'm a oh. little... PTSD from gas. Oh but yeah. True. I don't know. I may need just, you know, the projected. I may just need like 12 to 15. Yeah. I mean, Harris should be able to get to at least 10 or 12 because he they they rush the ball. I expect them to be leading that game. But I'm, I'm surprised that the Carolina has such a great rush defense after last year. Last year I know the worst. Last year they were horrible, but they did address that. They addressed their defense in the offseason. Um, but yeah, they, they've been a lot better this year, Good, good. but I did want to mention a lot of people been asking about Devante Adams. Yeah. And obviously he's going to play in this game. He returned to the facility after COVID protocols. Everybody knows the story with Aaron Rodgers. He won't be playing in this game. Now everybody's going to be like, okay, do you start Devante Adams or do you not? Now? I don't think he's a lineup lock. He obviously is one of the best, if not the best wide receiver in the league and in the fantasy football, but Jordan love is going to be at quarterback. Now I think he's going to be on slants. Adams is he's going to be on curls. They're going to make it easy for him to get catches. And I think he's going to have 10 targets at least in this game, but I don't know. You're probably starting him. I'd say 90% chance you start him. but if you're in a six team league, you're probably not starting him eight team league. You might want to consider somebody else. Now I have a really tough decision in my 12 team league that I it's a money league. I have Cooper Cup, Devontae Adams, Jamar Chase, and CeeDee Lamb. Now, I'm obviously starting Chase and Cooper Cup, but now I have the decision between Devontae Adams and CeeDee Lamb. Now, right now I have CeeDee Lamb in, but I might change that because Devontae Adams is projected a little bit more than CeeDee Lamb, and Lamb has that injury. So 
I'm going to monitor that injury for Lamb throughout the weekend, see if Gallup returns, which might diminish Lamb's value a bit. But I wouldn't be too worried about Adams. I wouldn't expect him to get 25 fantasy points or even 20. But I think his floor, he's going to get at least 10 to 15 fantasy points because of how much he's going to be targeted in this game. So I wouldn't be too worried. But obviously, anybody is benchable if you have other guys to start over him. Do you feel that with Jordan Love in that they're going to just run the ball more since the Chiefs suck at run and run defense? Exactly. I think it's going to be almost an identical game plan to when they played the Arizona Cardinals on Thursday night. I think Aaron Jones is going to have 20 touches, AJ Dillon 10 to 15 touches. The the last thing that Green Bay wants in this game is to be down. They don't want to be down by like two touchdowns to Mahomes because then you have to give it to Jordan Love and put it in his, his hands, and he's going to throw interceptions. He's not a great quarterback. So they're going to come out this game, and they're going to pound the ball. They're going to run it almost every first and second down and maybe even third down. So that's why that's another reason why I don't like Adams because they're going to run the ball so much. It's going to be a very interesting game. We had predictions. Yeah, it, it will. We had predictions It'll be... on our last one, and it was uh, – I said Packers. Uh, I still think Packers. No, but... you don't. Oh, yeah, yeah, I still think Packers, but... (laughs) You think Jordan Love is going to beat him? Oh, yeah. Dude, it's the year of the backups, man. Year (laughs) of the backups. So it's going to be a great game for him. He's just going to be an efficient game manager. Just going to need to hand the ball off, maybe make a couple 15-yard passes, nothing more. Um, But you got all your receivers back. You should should be fine. Yeah. Um, All right, is that going to do it for week nine? I think I think we're good. Awesome. So uh, to recap from you know every other week, John has a uh, TikTok live that goes live on noon on Sunday. My words are all messed up today. <laughs> Holy cow. His, he has TikTok live at noon on Sunday, uh, as well as he has a Patreon that I'll put a link to in the description. And that's just for more personable fancy football advice to help you win your leagues. So look out for those two things. And as always, we post this uh, every Saturday. So keep a lookout for that and hit the subscribe button. Hopefully you guys win your league and we will see you guys next week.